What's up, everybody? My name is Jason, and welcome to Small Biz. In today's video, we're going to talk about how Mullen just made 242 million shares of stock available for sale, which includes a $20 million offering, again, from Acuitas Capital. I will share with you before the end of this episode a very personal story of how the feds raided a stock brokerage firm that I was working at in the mid-1990s and why it applies to some of you that are still talking to Lion Larry. And before this is all over, I'll give you my honest opinion on whether the merger with MCOM and YAYO is a total disaster or not. All that and more coming right up. I hope everyone's having a blessed little different camera angle. I move it around Thursday afternoon. It's absolutely gorgeous here. Two o'clock hour, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. All right. You heard the news to start it off and don't go anywhere. I'm asking everybody's help. This is probably going to be 20 minutes long. Like it, share it everywhere. I'm going to tell you a very personal story that involved three major agents that scared the living bejesus out of me and why it applies to some of you that are exchanging text messages or phone calls with Lion Larry. And we may as well include David, who's run five companies into the ground, uh, CEO of Mullen, and of course, Sal in the infamous Hellbiz coin, which is also worthless, down 99.9%. But to start things off, I shared an article. Follow me on Twitter. Mullen Stock Alert just received a $20 million cash infusion, which leaves me with my first question of the day, ladies and gentlemen. If according to their last 10Q filing, they had $121 million worth of cash, why in the world are they doing another $20 million offering? Because if you read through this, it's a total of 59.07 new million shares with the warrants exercisable at 0.7255 cents, which is way above where it bottomed out this morning, maybe at 45 cents and change. And didn't I say about 30% ago that if the flush, the stops were flushed at 50 cents, it's probably going to 38 to 45. So do I think today was the bottom? No, way too orderly. You want to see a capitulatory flush somewhere in the mid to high thirties, then a big bounce. So say 38, 47, when it retraces half of that 42 and change, you pull the trigger, you put your stop at 37 cents a penny right below what could be the all time low in the next few weeks. But I digress. Last trade, 47 and a half cents. I don't think it's down going, uh, down going down. That's all folks. We don't edit around here. Done going down. But again, why are we doing more offerings? Why are we adding $20 million, another 59 million shares when we supposedly had with production just two months away and the collection of cash in the August and September timeframe? Why are we doing more dilution? And here's the even bigger question. If you scroll down this article, which again, I shared on Twitter at try small biz and make sure you find the blue check. 11,300 followers. I've got a bunch of clones. They're all copying me, including the green and red circles that I pin on the top every single day so that you know what to buy and what to sell. And as I said this morning, the only real disaster that we have is Mullen and MCOM. We are up 295% in the last Seven trades going back almost eight weeks now, up almost 600% after 116 winners to be exact since I started posting on March 1st of last year. In other words, I know what the fuck I'm doing. I've been right about 80% of the time, close to 70 if you go back through my 30-year career, 15 of that as a broker, but sometimes I'm wrong, or in the case of these two stocks, I've been really wrong, and I own it, but my question to you is, why in the world are these three shareholders filing to sell 242 million shares of stock? Some guy named Michael Wax. W-A-C-H-S, 20, 2022 Dynasty Trust. Well, that's a fancy name, isn't it? Must be a real upper crust kind of guy. Davis Rice PTY Limited. That sounds offshore. And Acuitas Capital, which again, just did a $20 million, 59 million share offering after we all thought they already had enough cash to get them well into next year. So my question to those three, and I'd love an answer for David. And by the way, I have a suggestion about the $18 million jet. So don't go anywhere. Why are these three filing to sell, which by the way, is the equivalent of almost 6 billion shares pre-split. 
We had a one for 25 reverse. Multiply 242 million shares times 25. You've got 6 billion shares for a sale. That is more than the entire outstanding over the last several years before the reverse split. Why are you putting yourself out there now at an all-time low, 45 cents and change last trade, 47? Why are you telling the street? Why are you telling shareholders, including myself, that are down 50 to as much as 90% or more, that you're willing to sell down here? I haven't seen any of these three, and I bet you won't come out and say, even though we filed and were allowed to sell the stock, which I think they're obviously in the middle of doing right now, we have no intention to do so. If you really believe for all you Mullinaniacs out there who have drank the Kool-Aid, you're laying down Jim Jones style, right? You just say, hey, take me. I'm ready to go. You don't believe that Lion and Larry might be telling the truth you think that because david ran five companies into the ground this time he's rehabilitated i say the odds are absolutely not why are they selling or filing to resale and they'll collect no money off this they got 20 million in cash so we got to believe they have somewhere around 170 to 80 million dollars in cash now which if they were absolutely legit would actually help roll out production I own the stock. I agree with that, but I don't see the logic in doing it at all time lows. And why are there three major insiders blowing out of the equivalent of 6 billion shares of stock as we speak? Answer. They either are desperately in need of the money, which I don't think is the case. They do not believe this five, 10, $500 price target bullshit. Or as I've been saying now for weeks, again, long the stock and getting. <coughs> eviscerated maybe it's a scam total scam we look busy around here in Irvine and Mississippi they spent a tenth as I outlined in yesterday's video of the 200 million dollars plus that they've raised over the last few years to look busy They've conned thousands of people just like BBIG did when they thought that you were the alternative to TikTok and it turned out to be a scam run by a felon who drove movie pass into the ground. What's any difference? What's the difference with this? Why are they blowing out of a billion quarter of a billion shares of stock at all time lows down 99% over the last 12 to 18 months down 91% according to this article year to date. It's not good. So how do you trade it if you're in it like myself? Again, I do not think we bottomed out today. It was too orderly. They take it down a penny. They take it down a penny. So they take it down a penny. So what it looks like to me is they're blowing out of the 242 million shares of stock in an orderly fashion. They probably told their bankers because they're somewhat sympathetic to those that own the stock. Don't blow it all out at once. Just sell five, 10 million shares every couple of hours. That's why it's very orderly. It got down to 45 and change. I think it went to almost 48. Last trade, 46.9 just after two o'clock in the afternoon. What I want to see is the capitulatory flush. I want to see the baby out with the bathwater. I want to see people freaking out, just throwing chairs through the window. And and uh, I almost said something really bad regarding windows, but you know what I'm talking about. So give me that flush down to the mid to high 30s and then a bounce. So a boom, all of a sudden it drops a dime. You're like, what the fuck just happened? And then it rallies. That to me indicates they got rid of the final tranche of 242 or thereabouts million shares of stock. It bounced 10, 15%. What would I do? I'd place my buy order right in the middle. So let's call it 42. Down to 38, up to 47, somewhere 42, 43. Your stop is at 37 a penny below the all-time low. So you're going to risk, if you're going to do this, 10%. And if it hits 37 and breaks a new low, you're out. Because we're probably, at that point, going back to a dime and eventually another reverse split. Because as you've heard me say many times, they got till September being non-compliant as they are still to get back over a dollar, which brings me to a very scary personal story that happened to me on Wall Street. And of course, we'll close out with the merger of MCOM in a minute. You might have seen Lion Larry was posting on May 12th, I believe, on his Facebook page. It's still there if you want to go see it that he's uh, in his golf stream 550 he's big pimping right what happens on the jet stays on the jet that was his quote like go see it but there's no picture you'll notice of lion larry actually 
in the jet. So was he taking photos or did he get photos from uh, David's $18 million jet? Stay tuned for what I think he should do with that. Or is he just finding something off the internet? You know, the same guy who claims he's got Joe Biden, the big guy on the uh, on the phone lines, folks, and he's got what, $400 million now, $500 million of pe- offerings from US and Middle Eastern companies that want to take him public in 1995 or six. I was working in the Bank of America building in Fort Lauderdale. We're talking 28 years ago. I was a young man, 25, 26 at the time. I was a couple of years into my Series 7 experience as a stockbroker. And again, I made and I lost millions. I was living the life, cars, speedboats, women, 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 and wine. You know the deal. So one day I get a phone call after I went back to the original firm that I started with. So I was there. I went somewhere else. I foolishly came back. The phone rings on a Friday afternoon, as the feds like to do, and they said, Jason? I said, yeah. And this is a virtual quote, ladies and gentlemen. This is Joe with the FBI. Get your fucking ass on the elevator and meet me in the lobby ASAP. I'm wearing a white, and I got chills right now if you can see them, thinking about how scared I was. I'm in the lobby, white starch shirt, red tie. And if you tell anyone, you're going straight to jail. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. I was shaking so bad, I walked out the front door. I took a right to go to the bathroom because I had a feeling I was about to get interrogated by the feds. And it was splashing all over the place, if you know what I'm talking about. I get downstairs, there he is, with another guy who was about six foot five. He was about mm, six feet tall. Not one fucking word was said. It was dead silence. We go out the door, took a left. They took me to another building. They sat me in a tiny room about the size of a small bathroom. I could see the camera in the upper right-hand corner. They sit my ass down for 20 minutes. I'm, I'm just like freaking out. I'm sure they're watching me on the camera. In comes three guys. Salt and pepper curly hair, some guy that looked like a redwood tree, about 6'5 red hair, and then your, your, your typical Clark Kent. Good cop. Red hair, bad cop. Curly-haired geek sits down. He leans over. He's like two feet, just like this camera is right now. And he goes, you know who I am? No. No, sir, I don't. He said, well, I'm the guy who took down Ivan Boski. In other words, I'm a badass motherfucker. That's exactly what he said to me. And I believed it. He's looking me straight in the eye. He's got the badge out. They all had guns on. It was scary as hell. And they tell me that we've been surveilling your firm for nine months. The owners of X, Y, and Z securities, we believe, and that was the feds, are on the take with some very shady characters. And you might be going to jail unless you answer X, Y, and Z. So I sat there. Long story short, for two hours, and I got interrogated, and I told him everything that I knew. And to this day, and you can check my record with the NASD, I've never had a complaint, let alone a lawsuit against me. I'm sharing a partial story here, ladies and gentlemen, because any of you, like the gentleman yesterday on Twitter who said, I just had a 32-minute conversation with Lion Larry. With all due respect, sir, you're asking for fucking trouble. Because in my opinion, Lion Larry, and we may as well throw in the possibility of David and Sal, are under surveillance. If you take what Lion Larry has publicly said from the guaranteeing of the a $10 billion deal with the Saudis when he was taunting the SEC and all the other outrageous stuff from private security to drone projects to having Biden on the phone line to one fucking lie after another, I'm telling you based on my experience, I almost guarantee they've got his phone tapped, they're, they're following his ass around, and they're building a file a mile long. So any one of you that are getting on the phone, probably just to get to the bottom of why you're getting your ass ass kicked along with me you're asking for trouble because if they subpoena or indict him or any of the other two they're coming after you they're gonna want to know what do you know about this guy why are you on the phone with them we're gonna need to see your email your bank records your blood sample the reason why you've heard me say and i can't stress this enough 
I never wanted to talk to the CEOs of these companies because of moments like this. I got scared to fucking death when I was a young man. I thought my life was over because I was stupid enough to go back to a firm that turned out was doing some very bad things. But because I wasn't directly involved with that, I got out and I resigned like three days later. So I'm telling you, you might think that you're picking Larry's brain, but when you are talking to an ex-con that's quite possibly going back to jail, because even if you do believe that he's telling the truth, he has violated, as I shared last night, numerous non-public material information laws, insider trading. You can't be texting the average Joe that you've got an X billion dollar deal that you're about to sign on Monday, on Tuesday, and even though it keeps getting delayed, and then he was in one Facebook Live saying that he just cashed his check from Mullen. And then yesterday in another uh, interview, he says that Mullen's not uh, paid him and he's moving on. It's one lie, one material, one fucking smoke screen after another. And if the feds are watching him, and I do believe they are, any one of you that has direct contact are asking for trouble. So don't say I didn't warn you. In closing, what's the deal with the MCOM merger? Please share this. I know this is going to be 20 minutes, probably longer. I care about you guys and gals. We're all in this together. We're all getting killed. I do believe they're both going to rally. If I had to pick which one's going to be the bigger rally, it's Mullen. I think 75 to a buck is very possible. I do not think after MCOM probably tests 15 to 20 is going back to a dollar anytime soon. Why do I say that? Well, if you dig deep, as I did last night, into the acquisition of YAYO, which hit an all-time low of, let's call it a nickel, in the last 48 hours. It's about the same size revenue-wise as MCOM. And they pointed out in the article, based on last year's revenue run rate, $32 million. Notice there were no projections. Notice this is a letter of intent. In other words, it's nothing formal. Why is that? I'll let you decide. But in this article, which I also shared, it says that the company they're merging with, and it'll be a ratio, all stock, because they don't have cash to pay for any acquisition, let alone half of their bills. But the company they are merging with, YAYO ticker on the bulletin board, in their last earnings, revenue was up 57% year over year. That's about three times as fast as the 18% that MCOM just reported year over year. So you're getting together approximately, assuming it's true, $33 million or thereabouts of revenue run rate. And in their acquisitive uh, uh, partner, they had a tiny quarter million dollar EBITDA, positive. So they're starting to generate Positive earnings, but from an annualized perspective, they're still lo losing millions. MCOM is losing tens of millions of dollars. It's down from its uh, SPAC two years ago under HLBZ. It's down 99.9%. .9%. And as I said before, Sal, the CEO of the company, is the worst fucking CEO in the history of NASDAQ as far as I'm concerned. So the question you may have is why in the world is this company wanting to get in bed under the ticker as a wholly owned subsidiary of MCOM? Why do they want to do business with Sal? Answer is inside of the CEO, Mr. Sanchez's comment as to why he's open to this idea. I don't want to jinx the merger. I unblocked Sal in the last few days. He's probably going to get blocked again. I don't want to put the potential of this merger and a rally any more at risk. I've told you guys and gals the truth since day fucking one. We're up almost 600% after 100 plus winners in the last 15 months. That's a fact if you're following me on Twitter. I know what I'm doing. I've been in this game a long time, and I can tell you that Mullen, and in this case MCOM, something is fucking wrong in the state of Denmark, and that's no offense, offense to the Danish because as the CEO of YAYO pointed out in the news announcement, their investment banker is going out of business. Translation, they have no access to capital anymore. And if you saw recently the last filing with MCOM, they've almost exhausted the entire $20 million uh, dilutive financing with Yorkville.
So let's assume that Sal has a million and a half to $2 million or thereabouts in cash. He's merging with a company that has no cash, that's knocking on chapter 11's door, whose investment banker is going out of business. And the CEO, and you can read the press release for yourself, said it was one of, if not our only option. So we have two very desperate companies getting together that may have a sexy story. And the other guy is probably a lot more legit than you know who, but the average daily volume of YAYO before the announcement at an all-time low on the pink sheets near a nickel was the equivalent of $2,000 a day. It was 40,000 shares at five cents. That's $2,000 of liquidity. That's non-existent. That is practically out of business. So while I hope and I pray there's a way out of this fucking mess, last trade, 24 cents. We have to be honest with where is the money going to come from? Even if they come together and it's a flawless union, union where is the money going to come from? One of them has no banker and no money. The other one's exhausted $20 million and driven the fucking stock down 90% since the reverse split two and a half months ago. So if it's me, as I said, what, before another 40% drop in the last 10 days, I'm not buying any more of it. I own it at 82 cents, as is the case with M uh, Mullen at 112. I am going from uh, capital appreciation to capital preservation. There shall be not one more dime of good money going after bad in either case. And before I go to sleep at night, I honestly say, dear God, please help get thousands of people including myself, out of this ditch. We are doing so well with our long-term ETFs, with the vast majority of stock picks. You've heard me say the numbers a million times, but we're getting bent over the desk, Larry, without any lube whatsoever. And as I said this morning, it's not only all the way in and up, but it's out the other fucking side. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, always remember, hang in there. I love you, and thank you so much for watching. Aloha.